Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I'm here with Nick Bedell at Virginia Country Club. Hey Nick, hey, how's it going? Nice seeing you. All right, we're out on the course. Uh, you'll see our first shot in just a second, but Nick is the CEO of this company here, Pure. You can see I got uh, Nick put th that side. Yeah, the Be Better Golf logo on these hats, um, which you guys can get. But uh, we got together because Nick is gonna be giving out prizes for the Be Better Golf Open that's coming up on August 23rd. So we're gonna play a little golf, talk about playing your best golf when you need to play it, uh, d regardless of how you are you know been playing. And uh, we're gonna talk about starting your own golf business, which is something that people always talk about. Nick, is that something you think that amateurs do too much when they're trying to play their best in a tournament? They just try to hit that exact perfect shot all the time? 100%, I think the, a lot of amateurs like to aim at a lot of flag sticks, where if you're to watch a tour event, you'll see the guys hitting it 15 feet left to right of every flag. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they'll stuff it in there with a the wedge, but if they have a five or six iron in their hand, um, mm -hmm. they're hitting it left and right on the fat side. Conservative golf, if I played a round of golf, 18 holes, I might aim at two or three flag sticks the whole day, and okay. that's if I have a perfect number, perfect club in my hand, uh, perfect wind, and the, the shot just looks right to me. All right, the final quick tip we'll get from you, Nick, is uh, first, a lot of the golfers are doing what you're doing right now. You've had uh, no warm-up swings, no yeah. warm-up putts, no, <laughs> nothing. So if they do want to actually play well, but uh, they're coming straight out of the car onto the course, and uh, everybody's like, all right, bud, you're on the tee. What, what's the best advice? Just I do. Uh, I got a like a stretching rope in my in my trunk that I, I try to stretch my chest out with. Um, try to stretch out my glutes and my hamstrings, and then hopefully you know try to make as many practices as possible before mm -hmm. I can make that first swing. I know a lot of guys like don't warm up; they go straight to the tee, maybe have a beer. Yeah. Um, but you know, if you want to play well in this game, you gotta you gotta have a good warm up. I gotta hang out with a lot of pros. Um, they're warming up two to three hours before the round with a workout. Mm -hmm with a stretch and then actually got out hitting balls. So yeah. um, you can't just run to the tee and expect to play well. Public service announcement, you are not Brooks Kepka. You're not gonna be <laughs> able to just walk out there and uh, no. win a big tournament. All right, uh, what do you got in front of you here, Nick? I got a par four, 387, little dog leg to the right. You do not want to hit it to the right, right is dead. So okay. anywhere on the left or in the fairway, you're good to go. So just like I said earlier, uh, I'm conservative. I'm gonna hit this ball way to the left. If it cuts, great, if not, I'm gonna be on the side of the hill. Oh, exactly like that. that, huh? Yep. Well, it's all right. High and straight. There we go. Nothing wrong with that. A little that. off balance, but it'll work. First swing of the day. <laughs> yeah. And how long you been here, Nick? Been here just under four years. Oh, okay. So worked for the Tigros Foundation for nine years. Mm -hmm. And then uh, came on board over here and um, love it. It's been great. Yeah, even if you hit at that left bunker, it's gonna kick down to the right. I had more to do with the lie there, but uh, so I'm over the bunkers. Yeah, there might be. And there's a second bunker there. You might be in the next one. Okay, I hit it good at least. I just yeah, yeah just ball. more than. Well, how is my alignment there? The ball, ble the ball being below your feet, you could have aimed a little more left. So like, so I was basically square, but you say because it's below my feet, I probably should have been a little bit more like yeah, that. Yeah, for sure not. And but again, I'm trying to hit on the flat side. So if I aim way left and you hit it and hit it so sort of the hill, bleed it to the right. Uh -huh. um, that's that's the play. I'm trying to hit a drop that line stuff. Okay. All right, Nick, we're at your ball, and the first thing I notice about your ball being here that reminds me of what's over there. Yeah. So, so th that's a good difference, and it, it keys into what you did on your tee shot. Hitting in those eucalyptus there, I've played here a thousand times. You can't hit the green from over there. I can hit the green from here easily, so. Um, just the, again, the I hit it on the fat side of the fairway. I'm in the rough, but the ball's sitting up nicely. I got 130 yards. The wind's out of the right. The ball's gonna go to the right. So the wind's sort of gonna hold it up. So I'm gonna aim a little left of the flag, sort of at that tree way back there. I have a nine iron from 130. I'm just gonna hit a small little pitch up there and see what happens. Hit down the green, 20 footer. That's how I play golf. Now, now were you trying to hit it a little low? Yeah, because uh, I mean, interesting. it was only 130 yards. I only had to fly at about 120. So I took a nine iron, took a little off it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a big fan of trying to hit an iron full 100% uh, trying to get the distance. I'm trying to hit a certain number so 
I could care less if you get your pitching wedge 145. Right. I'll have mine 125 and I'll beat you all day long. That's just how I've learned how to play the game. And uh, well, I'm let's, not. let's talk about how you play the game. So um, just tell our viewers about your career in actually, not as yeah. a teacher, but actually as a player. I started playing at age six. Uh, my uncle, who's a PGA pro, got me involved. Um, we lived on a golf course and he would take me over and we'd just drive the golf carts and that's what got me hooked. Yeah. Um, by age eight or nine, I was playing junior tournaments. And then by 10 or 11, I started winning, winning a few. And then sort of played into high school golf where I got to play with John Merrick, who's on tour and, and won a PGA Tour event. And then played in uh, college at Long Beach State with uh, Brett Letter, who's a good mini tour player and now a pro here at Virginia. Um, so as soon as I graduated college, I knew I wasn't good enough. I didn't have the money, so I got myself a job. Right. Yeah. If you're going to do it right, you need at least 75 grand a year to do it correctly. Right. You can't do it while maintaining a, a full-time job or uh, not, I don't care how much talent you have. It's, it's hard to do. So. Um, it's tough, and I knew I didn't have the greatest college career, and um, didn't play very well, and I didn't have the money, so I knew it was, you know, plan B. Uh, I was a little too far. Who is your other prep? Uh, Trevor Baker is the head pro here. Okay. All right, Nick, as we're getting back into the cart, tell us a little bit about why did you decide to start this brand uh, that yeah. you started and, and um, what that was like. It sort of came out of nowhere. Um, since I've worked here at Virginia Country Club, uh, I've been fortunate enough to play some some nice places. I've, got a, I've gone to Pine Valley. Um, got to go to Ireland a few weeks ago. Uh, I've got to go Bannon Dunes trips. So um, every time I've won, I sort of posted on Facebook checked in and, and, and captioned every, I took a picture of the prettiest hole in the golf course and captioned it with pure and didn't really think anything about it and a lot of comments, a lot of uh, members chiming in and my um, girlfriend told me we need to start a company called pure. It was like your personal catchphrase. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and you know, and I was like, oh, I don't know, I don't think, I don't I mean, I got too much going on and I don't, I don't know if that's going to work. Um, but sure enough, uh, People kept saying, you know, you should start a brand called Pure, and then, and then I did a little uh, sort of small project to see if there's any interest, and um, sold some sold some goods pretty quickly, and uh, that's how we all we started this thing. So, um, been in business for three months now, sold about 600 hats and some other uh, accessories, um, but so far so good, and it's uh, it's taken off. Yeah, I remember when you when you. I was on your Instagram, and when you first started the company, like out of nowhere, like I, I started, you started putting some logos up and stuff. Yeah. And you had the hashtag, which I really liked. You had the hashtag uh, "Take a Shot." Yeah. So the thing that I liked about that was that, uh, you know, there's because a lot of people let um, the criticism of other people or uh, fear of like you know falling in your face and failing at something keep them from doing something, but. This is, you just decided to take a shot at it, huh? That, that's, uh, that's one of the meetings. Well, okay. <laughs> the, the other okay. meeting was... That's, uh, that's what I got yeah. from it anyway. <laughs> I love it. Um, the other meeting was, I was saying, or I, was, I mean, I, was, I get to play these places, and it looked like it was pretty frequently, and my uh, girlfriend said, you know, every time he says pure, you got to take a shot, meaning alcohol, so you're going to be drunk. <laughs> uh, okay, so, I'm, way, I'm way off. <laughs> that's but great. But I, I like your thought. That's great. So this is the second old Virginia yep. Country Club. It's usually 400, but it's two blind shots, which uh, we never, I don't like to hit two blind shots in a row. Um, so we play up here from the ladies tee, 263. Um, all the pros play from up here. It's just a better hole. Um, so got a fruit in my hand. So it wind's out of the left. I'm gonna hit it at the left bunker and just let the wind take it back toward the middle of the green. Man, is that perfect or what? There you go. Ah, there you go, yeah. Should be okay, I think? Yeah. That tree doesn't bother us. No, it's past the tree. 
So talk to me about, uh, you messaged me probably a year ago. Yeah. And you told me about a shot that I hit when I was like, 16 or you're, you're like i remember you hit this shot oh yeah we're yeah nick I'm like, what are you <laughs> yeah. talking about? i don't think i don't think nick was i don't think you were 16 i think you were in college because I, I was bob livingston was following you okay uh and it was at the long beach match play and uh i forget why i messaged you about that shot because i think you posted a shot from that hole too oh really yeah i think so it's the eighth hole at el dorado and um, I was following you guys again because I only started playing golf probably around that time. Okay. Because I only started playing golf when I was like 24. Got it. So um, I was like 26 or so, and you were you were still in college. The eighth hole at El Dorado is like probably the second hardest hole in the course. It's like 430 yards. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And Nick hit it with this. What did you use back then? It was like a Cobra, uh -huh. a black and yellow Cobra driver, I think. When it, like remember the one that Camille Vajegas and yeah, uh, JB yeah, Holmes yeah, used? Cobra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so on this 430 yard hole back in, God, I don't know, 2009 or 2007, something like that. Yeah, you hit it, you hit it to, I think, to 75 yards on that hole. And uh, I remember some of the guys I was playing with said, that's the longest shot I ever hit there. I saw hit there and, and that, is, that still to this day is the longest shot I ever saw hit on that hole. So congratulations, you can put that feather in your hat. <laughs> this is a question we get all the time, short game wise, Nick. Yeah. Especially when people play nice courses like this one, mm -hmm. when they're nervous and they have a tight lie yeah. to a pin that's kind of short and you ideally would want to loft this, especially you as somebody who likes to play it on the ground a little bit yeah. more. How are you going to approach this shot? Okay, so I have 15 yards of the fringe. I have 10 feet of green to work with. I do not mind you using a putter from here because if you, you putter from here, the worst you're going to be is eight feet from the hole, yeah. shorter or long. So I don't mind putting, especially if you're playing on grass like this. Um, it's tight, um, it's smooth. Putter is not a bad play. So don't be afraid to use a putter around the greens. Yeah, your friends might not think you're cool, but guess what? Lower scores on the scorecard are really cool. So uh, putter could be the play. Now, if you're a, a good chipper, I'm chipping this 100% of the time. Yeah. Because um, I feel like I, I can make this shot, okay? And on a tight lie, the only thing you need to worry about is making sure that the trailing edge of the bounce of the of the sole hits the ground first if the leading edge hits first you're gonna dump it in front of you or you get the middle of the ball and it's gonna scream over the green so all i focus on is getting the trailing edge of the bounce to hit the ground slide underneath the ball and try to make it again a lot of people are worried about their about the contact if you're worried more about making the shot you're gonna hit better shots oh perfect go in Oh, flipped it up. Okay, almost. so the question that people have that I, that I have is, if I do that kind of almost Mickelson thing where you're intentionally fatting it a little bit, uh -huh. how do you know that it's not gonna rebound and then thin it, get that rebound thin shot? Yeah. yeah. Number one, um, the weight needs to be forward. Okay, so I'm probably 70, 30 on my left side, and my sternum needs to stay in front of the ball. If that sternum goes backwards to the right, you're gonna bounce it, Yeah. okay? So it's got to stay in front and then from there I'm just trying to feel like the club face comes in neutral. I'm not trying to do anything fancy. Um, funny story, I got to play with Mickelson uh, about two years ago and at the time I was, um, obviously I was nervous playing with him. Wasn't chipping my best and I putted a couple from the fringe and he asked me what the hell I was doing. And I said, you know, Phil, I just don't feel comfortable chipping in front of you. And he says, I'll, get, I'll fix you in two minutes. So we had a couple chips on the uh, 12th hole at Big Canyon and he told me to put 90% of my weight on my front foot, open the face, and just put the club on the back of the ball. And it's the easiest way to make contact. It's making sure all the weight is forward, the club face is open, and that club can slide. Yeah. Where a lot of people tend to dig it in the ground. With their I'd weight rather, the even if you bounce it, foot. bouncing is much better than digging it, because digging it, you're gonna hit it six feet in front of you. Chipping, actually easier than, than people think. People just make it difficult because they're so worried about the contact where I'm worrying about trying to hold yeah, it. If you keep your mind in the, in the target. And yeah. now, now, do you have your mind in where the ball's gonna stop or where the, or the landing point? I'm always landing. So I'm always yeah. looking at where I want the ball to land. Um, and then I try to execute it. I sort of see it, see it in my mind and uh, try to go ahead and make it good. I got to play with them. And we were walking to the tee on number one. And I was playing with two other guys on the PJ Tour. Yeah. And Phil asked me, he goes, hey, these guys said they give you a couple shots. And I was like, yeah, 
I mean, I'm a club pro. Yeah, right. And he said, okay, then you're on, you're on my team. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> See, I've heard before where Phil will look at somebody's swing and decide whether or not, it, like, he can almost instantly, yeah, we like, warmed up. handicap I he, them. I don't think he watched me warm up, but we warmed okay. up and... Uh, Yeah, Phil, I mean, Phil is maybe the, the smartest golf brain I've ever, ever seen. Kind of like that. What were you saying? You got to play with Phil the day after the, the Faraday interview. After the there. Faraday interview, and uh, I, played him, I played with him at Big Canyon, and probably 20 or 25 members came up to him and, and said they watched the show, and he was gracious with his time and, and talked to every guy for about a minute. Um, but he, he went pretty in depth on the Faraday show about different stuff that he thinks about on the golf course. And we asked him a few questions and he goes, I can go more in depth, which I thought was like off the charts crazy because it, it seemed like he's... Yeah, in the show he talks about, okay, if the ball's wet, if it's dry out, if it's... Yeah, what if the chokes down half an yeah, inch, right. the ball goes three All yards shorter. All the different shorter. yardages that you get. If you a ball off a yeah. tee, it goes six yards further. He, he's got some, some crazy stats, but he, he's done his research on it for sure. He's got a, a brilliant uh, golf mind and yeah. very smart dude and... Uh, another club junkie so we talked clubs uh, the whole day the amazing uh, thing is that he can have that almost like um scientific mindset yeah but he's not very, no, he's known as the ultimate very creative, artist yeah, yeah yeah very creative around the greens um maybe the best short game i've ever seen in person but he hit good shots that day short game shots he uh lipped out three bunker shots and he oh, hold out one wow from the fairway from the ferry bunker Oh no. I thought this looked like it wasn't going to break as much as no, I thought. No, it's going to break quite a bit to the left. Okay. Are you a flag in or flag out guy? Flag in. Yeah? Yeah, I'm I'm on, I'm on the new school. I was a flag in guy for years because on the vlogs, oh, cuz on the vlogs people can't see the hole. Yeah, the flag so, the flag I've been doing that for work. They're too they're too stiff they're too firm so they're not flexible like the oh they will rebound tour. yes oh, okay so we're uh, we're a flag out so this is a guy. like bryson was saying there's like four courses on on the whole schedule that he would be flag out yeah so this would be yeah, one of them too, okay too uh too firm might help some people visually but i'm not yeah i mean visually that's the thing that azinger said uh, like when he did the Ryder cup azinger was like he was big on this thing that he shared with his team about the golf hole is uh, a mental puzzle because you're aiming at a negative space uh -huh. so there's nothing there to aim at if you think of trying to define what a hole is you can't you can't define it within itself like you have to say it's the absence of something right yeah, sure. so so that's one of the things that makes your brain extremely hard to aim at a hole so during the Ryder Cup his big mental thing that he shared with the team was hey I want you to imagine something silly floating above the hole so he said like a little rubber elephant or a little rubber ducky and try to try to hit that thing there and i think when you're putting with the flag stick in uh your brain understands that a little bit more 200 yard 204 yard par three the third hole of virginia i consider probably the toughest hole um there's nowhere to miss it if you miss it left it's death and to miss it right it's a very difficult up and down so this is a shot where i try to hit at the right bunker and try to hit a little draw um You'll see when we get up there, the, the whole sort of funnels that way. So uh, anything at that right bunker is a good shot. That's great. Okay. There we go. Tiger spins it a lot, um, and his irons or the lofts are very weak. So the new TaylorMade iron that came out, the P7 TWs. Yeah, the special uh, edition yeah, Tiger one. I had, a, I got a set of them, and because I, I'm, I, lo I love golf clubs, so I'm always testing and trying new stuff. Um, but the loft on the pitching wedge, 49 degrees, and his irons have a lot of grooves. Where if you look at a the iron right now, six on, I have mm -hmm. probably 12 grooves. His his irons probably have 14 or 15 groups, and they're really close to each other. Okay, so it creates even more backspin. Yeah. So I was hitting the pitching wedge, 49 degree pitching wedge. I was going like 105 yards. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, these look pretty, but I can't hit a pitching yeah, right. wedge that short. Are uh, are those clubs foam filled like the other, like no. the 790? No. Okay. No, his were 
they say they have tungsten in the in the center okay um to make the ball go a little further but i didn't see that it was uh he, he, he likes he's all about sound so now what was the thing that you noticed the most um when spending so much time around tiger at his events and other things like that you notice the most about tiger's preparation and practice uh he does the same thing every single time so for uh, years yeah and he still does it so for putting um i've got to hang out with him practicing um he only puts from about three feet four feet and he'll put there for hours um and i've asked him why and he said uh if i can see the line on a three footer I can see a line on a 30 footer so yeah um, if i can't see a line on a, on a three footer how am i gonna be able to do that way back there so what does he do when he works on his speed though like his speed control with putting? yeah so he'll get to like on a the morning before the tournament to warm up he'll hit putts with his one with one hand and he'll hit them like 30 feet just to get the, the speed of the greens mm -hmm. um, but he'll spend most of his time inside of 10 feet putting i mean you've probably seen the stats where yeah outside of seven feet really doesn't matter right, right? you're just trying to if you make if you can make anything everything inside of seven feet you're doing pretty pretty well fast uh, not too bad it's late in the day yeah still not enough yeah, it goes, it goes left. still not enough That's how I do. I'm boring golf, just all pars. Right corner of the cup. This vlog is brought to you by the Be Better Golf Open, which is happening on August 23rd at Rec Park in Long Beach, California. It's coming up soon, and there's gonna be a lot of prizes there. I have these uh, hats that the winners of all the different flights, it's for every level of golf or every age as well. Um, that Nick is uh, setting us up with these pure hats and also some other pure stuff. And then somebody, a friend of mine, gave me a signed Jordan Spieth caddy bib. So, but the only way you can get that is to, to register early and then we'll do a raffle for that. That won't be like a skill-based thing. And uh, some other cool prizes. We're gonna have food afterwards, a way to get to meet a lot of other Be Better golfers and have a good time. So what I want you to do is click the registration link and follow information for it and uh, register now. It's a very affordable tournament and it's gonna be a lot of fun. Let's get on to the next one. What are we looking at next, Nick? Across the street, it's gonna be a 370 yard dog to the right, par four, with a big bunker on the right. 